Hey y'all, how's everybody doing today? So this is Labor Day weekend. Not sure when you will view this recording, but it is Labor Day weekend. Um, not sure when it will be uh, edited and posted, but I'm recording on Labor Day weekend. So how's everyone enjoying their Labor Day weekend, I guess is what I should say. Um, so, thought I would take some time to do a new recording and a new look for y'all. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little story. So way back when, back a long time ago, many, many years ago, man, I look so pale. That's why I need some makeup. So this is another episode of makeup and music. Okay. I'm about to do my face cause I'm looking quite pale. Um, so way back many, many years ago, right? Um, back in 1986, I was 10 years old back in 1986. I went to my very first concert. My mom took me, my dad, my mom had two tickets. I think somebody gave them to her and my dad was gone hunting. It was hunting season, so it was like October or November. And my mom, I think she tried to find a girlfriend to go with her and nobody was available or something. It was kind of like a last minute thing. And so y'all have already done my face. Well, I've not done my entire face, but I have primed my face and I've put on my CC cream and my foundation, but I'm doing my eyes. Um, anyways, back to my story here. So, um, my mom, um, got these tickets to this concert and, um, she managed to score two tickets to this concert and, um, she decided she would take me with her. I was 10 years old, y'all, my very first concert. And um, so what, what such an exciting time for a 10 year old kid, right? Very first concert. And you know who we got to go see? The one and only George Strait. So that is who we're gonna talk about today. King George Strait. So I was 10 years old, my very first concert. And you know what? That opened up the door for many, many, many concerts to come. So since then, 10 years old, 1986, I have gone to um, at least 70, concerts. I have been to at least 70 concerts that I can remember. Um, I did, I like sat down one day and I tried to make a list of all of the concerts, not just country, but rock and pop. I tried to make a list of all of the concerts I've been to and I came up with at least 70 different concerts. Um, 54 country artists. Uh, there's been some um, rock and pop artists also. Um, I can't, I don't know how many rock and pop, not as many rock and pop artists as country artists because you know I'm more of a country girl. But um, 54, raw, uh, 54 country artists and a total of 70 different concerts. And George Strait, I've seen him, I think, at least probably four or five different times. So, anyways, but it all started when I was 10 years old in 1986 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, when I saw him for the very first time, my very first concert. So, that is who we're going to talk about today, okay? George Harvey Strait Sr. He was born May 18th, 1952 in Poteet, Texas. He's, he's 68 years old, okay? 
Um, so he is an American country music singer, songwriter, actor, and music producer. Okay, so let's talk a second about him being an actor. So I think we all know about his acting career, right? He starred in this little old movie called Pure Country. And I think we're pretty much familiar with that movie, Pure Country. Um, he played a character who was a country music singer by the name of Dusty. He wore long hair that he pulled back into a ponytail. And he, um, he was, he like, his country music shows were like spectacular, right? So he had the fire, not the fire, but the smoke and the lights and just like this really spectacular, um, glitzy, you know, show that he gave his audience, right? Like you walked away from his show thinking, man, that was quite a show, right? And then there was his manager. She was a female lady, a person who was quite a, quite a person, right? She was, she was quite a, quite a lady. Okay. And that wasn't Dusty. That wasn't his character. He was, um, a, well, the name of the movie was Pure Country because that's who he was. He was more of the traditional country person. He he didn't need to have all that smoke and lights and the sound effects and all that that glitter and, and glam. He just wanted to be able to stand up there and sing, which is what George Strait is all about. So, um, you know, not everybody has to swing from the rafters and dance around the stage. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some of those people, like, I'm not going to name names, but some of those people that do all that, they put on, like, one heck of a show. And we walk away from their show saying, man, that was, like, the best concert I ever been to. That was great, hands down, entertainer of the year, best, best concert I've been to. And, you know, and then there's George Strait who can just stand there and play his guitar and sing his songs one hit after another. And we walk away from that, that concert saying, man, that was the best concert I've ever been to. Hands down, best show ever, entertainer of the year. I mean, it's really just who you like and what you, what, what you're into. So, I mean, it's all about, I guess, preference and you can like both. So, but you know, back to this movie, Pure Country, um, he, his character, Dusty, didn't like that type of, um, show that he was putting on and he, he, he like escaped and ran away and, um, ran away to this little, little town and cut his ponytail off as if that would, you know, make people not notice him. He still looked the same. Just cut the ponytail. Come on, George Strait. Anyways, um, fell in love with this girl and she, like, she didn't notice him. Come on. Okay. So, um, you know, as the story goes, uh, they find him and of course they fall in love, but the, the people find him and he goes back and it's just, it's a love story. It's a good movie. I mean, who doesn't like pure country? But anyways, that was George Strait's acting career. Okay. So back to the, what all he's done. He's American country music singer, songwriter, actor, and music producer. He is known as the king of country right rightfully so the king of country music and why wouldn't he be so the king of country music he is considered to be one of the most influential and popular recording artists of all time that makes total sense to me i mean the man's been around 
since the 80s. Okay, he's also known for his neo-traditionalist country style and cowboy look. Okay, he has not ever changed his cowboy look. He has stayed true to his country roots. He always is wearing his um, cowboy boots, his Wrangler jeans, his button-up shirts, and his cowboy hat. And you just can't go wrong. I'm sorry, you just can't go wrong with that look. And if there's one thing we know about George Strait is his country look. It's just classic country look. And I, for one, appreciate a man in a pair of cowboy boots and Wrangler jeans. You know, Clay Walker, he can, he can totally wear that look. I'll have to do a, a story on Clay Walker one of these days too, because he was, he was my jam in the nineties. If you know me in high school, from high school, you know that Clay Walker was my man in the nineties. Okay, back to George Strait. Um, and so George Strait is also known as being one of the first and most prominent country artists to bring country music back to its roots and away from pop country era in the 1980s. So I don't really remember, I mean, I don't, I don't really remember country music changing to pop country in the 80s because I was just a small kid back then, but may, I guess maybe that had happened. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, but apparently George Strait brought it back around, so good for him. Okay, so um, um, his success, though, started, I had to clean this up. We're doing some red eyes here because, well, why not? But anyways, I'm wearing my shirt that says Think Straight because we're talking about George Strait and that's what my shirt says. We're gonna, we need to think straight here. It's George Strait shirt, think straight. But I gotta clean this red up here a little bit. Um, anyways, so back to George. Um, so George's success began with his first single, Unwound. Who remembers that song? I do. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you remember that song. Um, it was a hit in 1981. Oh my, remembering that song, telling my age. Okay, so during the 1980s, I'm, gonna, I'm fixing to tell you about his success here and all of his, um, his success. Actually, I can't even, um, For me to tell you all about, he, he's had so much success, he probably can't even remember it all um, because it just goes on and on and on. If you look George Strait, George Strait, Google him, and you go to like Wikipedia, it just goes on and on and on about him and it we would be here forever. He's got so much stuff. I mean, when you've been around for decades and you start having all the accomplishments of, of, you know, someone who's been around for as long as him, it's going to just be so much. But anyways, so, um, okay. So during the 1980s, seven of his albums reached number. I wrote this down because I didn't want to miss any of it. You know, I want to be accurate in my facts when I relay my information. So, um, during the 1980s, Seven of his albums reached number one um, on the country charts. I feel like I have a hair. In the 2000s, Strait was named Artist of the Decade by the Academy of Country Music. He was elected into the Country Music Hall of Fame and won a Grammy Award for his album, Troubadour. He was named CMA, so CMA is Country Music Association. He was named CMA Entertainer of the Year 
1989, 1990, and 2013. So he got three Entertainer of the Years for CMA, Country Music Association, Entertainer of the Year for 1989, 1990, and 2013. And then ACM, which is Academy Country Music Entertainer of the Year in 1990 and 2014. So two years for Entertainer of the Year for Academy of Country Music. So he's got five Entertainer of the Year awards. By 2009, George broke Conway Twitty's record for the most number one hits on the Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart when his 44 number one singles surpassed Twitty's 40. It's almost um, too much for me to comprehend. <laughs> okay, let me say it again. So, 44 number one singles. He has 44 number one singles that passed up Conway Twitty's 40. So, Conway Twitty had the record with 40, but George Strait broke that with 44. So, now George Strait is the record holder of that with 44. Okay, moving on. S Strait has a total of 60 number one hits, breaking a record also previously set by Twitty, right? Giving him more number one songs than any other artist in any genre of music. Um, I just, I, I, like I said, there's more, even more. I mean, because the man's been around since, like, 81. So, that's decades of, of, um, success, really. And it's just so much that, that you could... that you could, um, that I could say about him, but it's just so much. It's just so much. Okay. Um, he has sold more than one million, no, more than a hundred million, man, a hundred million records worldwide. I have to get, I mean, I have to really pay attention to what I'm saying here because there's a big difference between 1 million and 100 million. He has sold more than 100 million records worldwide and that makes him the best selling, I got something in my eye and it's burning. That makes him the best selling, don't you hate it when that happens because it messes everything up. But that makes him the best-selling artist of um, all time. So, the best-selling artist of all time, go George. More than 100 million records sold worldwide, making him the best-selling music artist of all time. amazing. He's known for his touring career, and so the straight tours earned him $99 million in three years. So, in three years' time, when he was on the straight tours, he uh, earned $99 million, and he did uh, the... Um, his concert at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas in June of 2014. He drew a crowd of over 104,000 people and that was actually a record. And that was a record for um, the largest indoor concert in North America. So that's quite a 
that's quite a crowd. I mean, that is a large, that's a large, large group there. I'm using just a little bit of this um, yellow pigment right here in the center. This is um, Pharmacy Pineapple Pigment. It's just continued now, but it's so pretty. And I think it gives a really pretty pop of color. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Eyes. Okay, so, and like I said, his success is just, like, astounding. Like, I can't even, I can't even talk about it all, because it's just, um, it's so much, you know, so much. I'm going to blend that in just a tad there. Okay, okay, so let's talk a little bit, though, about, like, his, um, his married life or his personal life, actually. This is that pineapple pigment. Okay, so um, George, he got married. He's married to this really nice lady. Her name is Norma. And you know what? They are still married today, which I think is amazing because they've been married for a long time and they're still married. That's awesome. Um, but they, they actually eloped. She's, she was his high school sweetheart for one. And the, they're still married. That's so cool. So they eloped to Mexico and, um, they got married in December um, 4th, 1971 to Mex in Mexico and they're still married. So that's, I don't know how, what, 40 something years? I didn't do the math. Anyways, they're still married and um, that same year that they got married, he actually enlisted into the United States Army. I did not know that. Did not know that, that he was in the Army. So he enlisted into the United States Army and he was um, stationed um, in, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, Schofield, maybe, I think is maybe how you say it. Schofield Barracks in Hawaii. And I guess if you had to be stationed anywhere, Hawaii would be the place to be, right? So he was stationed in Hawaii. And actually, while he was in the army, he was in a country music band he started performing with a country music band and they were called Rambling Country. And so he um, performed with Rambling Country while he was in the army. Um, he had, um, while he was still stationed there in Hawaii, he, him and his wife Norma had their first child in 1970, October 6, 1972. October 6, that's my nephew's birthday. Um, anyways, they had a little girl named um, Jennifer while they were still in Hawaii, while he was still in the Army. Anyways, he um, served in the Army from 1971 to 1975 and he attained the rank of corporal. And so he was honorably discharged from the army in, um, in 1975. And then in 1981, they had a second child, a son who they named George Strait or yeah. George Strait Jr., but he, they call him Bubba, okay? So anyways, unfortunately though, they lost their daughter in 1986. Um, she was tragically killed in a car accident. 
and they have set up um, like memorial foundations for her um, in Texas. I think she, I think it said she was killed in San Antonio. So they have like um, um, foundations in San Antonio set up for her in, in honor of her name. And then let's see. So Bubba, he has he is all he is married now. He's grown up and married. He um he attended Texas A and M University, and he has a degree from Texas A and M. And he um went on to um he is a cowboy, like a real cowboy. Okay, so he he does like um professional um team roping. He's a professional team roper. And he does a team, so he does team roping, and he is a, a part of the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association, where he does professional team roping. So, anyways, okay, um, and then let's see, George is a grandpa because Bubba. And his wife had a child. And so, on in February of 2012, um, George became a grandpa. And so, little George Harvey Strait III was born. So sweet. So, now there's, I guess, three generations of George Straits. So, three generations of George Straits. Isn't that sweet? Okay. So, what is your favorite George Strait song? I am thinking that um, I personally like his older stuff from the 80s. And early 90s. Um, you should leave in the comments what your favorite George Strait songs are. And I'll just tell you what my favorites are. Okay, so... The Cowboy Rides Away. So, at all of the concerts that I've ever been to... Um, he would close out his concert. So you know how like they have encores? So like he would sing and then he, he would close out his concert and then, you know, he'd walk away and everybody would be like, come back, come back, come back. And um, he'd come back on and he'd sing like another song and then he'd sing The Cowboy Rides Away. And it was like, if he sang The Cowboy Rides Away, that was it. So, I think I've been to like three or four of his concerts, and every single one of them, if he sang The Cowboy Rides Away, then that was it. They turned the lights on after he sang The Cowboy Rides Away, and I thought that was cool because that was it. The Cowboy Rides Away, so that was the end. So, anyways, um, if you've been to a George Strait concert, did he sing The Cowboy Rides Away, and then that was it? Share that in the comments. Um, but tell me, what are your favorite George Strait songs? I want to know. Tell me in the comments. Share with me. I'm going to tell you what mine are. Um, so The Cowboy Rides Away is probably one of them. I really, actually, really, really like his earlier I'm sorry, I have to put this um, eyeliner on with a close-up mirror. But I probably really like his earlier, um, his earlier stuff. So, Uh, the chair.
and the fireman. Uh, my husband's favorite is nobody in his right mind would have left her. Or, uh, no, sorry. That is a good one. I like that one. Nobody in his right mind would have left her. That is not my husband's favorite. My husband's favorite is you look so good in love. Great song. You look so good in love. You want him? It's easy to see. You look so good in love. I wish you still wanted me. Okay. You look so good in love. That's a good song. Um, The Fireman. I don't, one of my favorites too is Marina Del Rey. Isn't that a pretty song? Okay. Okay, so Marina Del Rey, um, Full Hearted Memory. I love that song too. Um, Baby Blue, that's really pretty. Oh, does Fort Worth ever cross your mind? Okay, so I did an ombre on my lips. I used a dark um, red, which is this pharmacy, it's Superstar. And in the middle, I used this red love, which I've used before. And I used number 207 um, lip liner. And I just need to put on some uh, mascara and I think that we will be done with this look. So what are you thinking so far of this? Probably need to put on a little bit of setting spray. I think I gave my lip, my eyeliner enough time to dry. Um, I'm always scared to do my, um, my, um, my setting spray. Um, after I do my, um, liner because I'm always like, did I give it enough time to dry? Cause if not, I'm going to have it everywhere. Anyways. And I always do my um, setting spray before I do my mascara too, because then I'll have it all over the place. Anyways, um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of some more George Strait songs that I really like. I, I don't know. I tend to go back to the classics, the, the ones from the 80s and the early 90s or, that I prefer the most. Um, I, I don't know. I really like those probably the most um, that I, I like to listen to. There's so many good ones, you know, so many. The un, Unwound, his very first one is a good one too. Anyways, I wanna hear what your favorite George Strait songs are, so please leave me your favorite George Strait songs in the comments. And I also wanna know what you think about this makeup look. Leave your comments about this makeup look in, in, uh, leave your comments for me in the, about this makeup look as well. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and even ring the bell, okay? I need y'all to ring the bell. Like, like my video, share with your friends, subscribe and ring the bell. I need your support. I appreciate your support. And also give me your feedback on like um, future videos. Like who do y'all wanna hear about? 
um, cause we're just getting started. Okay. So like I did Dolly Parton and George Strait, but like I have a list. Okay. So I can do, I've got like Reba McIntyre on my list, Loretta Lynn, Merle Haggard, um, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, uh, Johnny Cash, um, Patsy Cline. So tell me who y'all want to hear about. Because I am up for whoever. Just tell me who y'all think and I'll do it. There's lots of makeup to be done and lots of music to be talked about. Okay, just tell me. Okay, so, I think we're about done here. Wow, this makeup look, like, once you do your mascara, it looks so much better. It really adds to it. And now I don't look pale anymore. Okay, so here we are, we're done. And I look, I don't look pale anymore. Woo, okay, here we go. So what do you think? Do you like it? Do you love it? Tell me what you think. I think this red makes my eyeballs pop. Woo. Okay, here we go. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate your support. Give me your comments. Give me your feedback. I want to know what you think. Oh, and what do you think about my background? It's glittery, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And I will see you all later. Bye.